inserting yourself in confusion is a pretty silly thing to do, but uh, it's a difficult lesson for some, it seems. But you may be a member of the Conservative Party. Yeah. No, I've sort of sworn off British politics. I'm bored of it electorally, but I do enjoy a good laugh. And as you can see here, um, they exist. So what do they decide to do? Well, they put out a bunch of crappy posts. And what I love about this, as you can see on screen, I'll try and turn off the bloody audio. It's awful. It's some American doing a voiceover, which, ah, uh, yes. British you don't party. know what this is, do you? It's a reference to a movie, isn't it? It's the Twilight Zone. And a movie, isn't it? It's a series. Oh. It's a series. Yeah, you're too young. Whoopsie daisies. Oh, and I did see an episode, the one with um, that World War I pilot who comes back to World War II. Yeah. And it turns out he needs to then travel back in time and kill himself to save his friend. I haven't seen that one. Ah, well, that's a good one. <laughs> but anyway, but the point being that, as you can see, this whole thing is like, oh, imagine a world if the Labour Party were in charge. You know what would happen? High taxes, high bills. <laughs> Oh, they'd be crying. immigration, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> we, don't need, we don't need to imagine it. We've had a Labour government since 1997. Well, can we... That's what I keep saying. Sorry to interrupt the video, but I just want to let you know that we have a brand new selection of merch on our merch store. Uh, these won't be in the store forever, so if you do want them, go and get them now. Thanks very much. Can we scroll down a bit? Because I think I ratioed this. D is that, that's your number one sport in life Oh, look now. at that, yeah. <laughs> You've created a dystopian present. Yeah. yeah, you can see. <laughs> look at that ratio. I mean, three hundred. Yeah, yeah. I, I just whenever they tweet something, I just point out you're the guys ruining everything. But I love that they also get community noted now. And I must say, Twitter is a much funner place when the powers oh, yeah. that be continuously just get fact checked. Yes, because it used to be the case. You remember when the fact checkers, yep. those those independent fact checkers, when they were in charge, mm. that it would only go one way, and yeah. now it goes both ways. Mm. And it just deals with people who are lying. I do love Elon Musk's Twitter. Yeah. So you can see here, they point out tax burden is actually the highest it's ever been since yep. the war. Uh, bills are the highest, thanks to you. Crime is also up. 59%. That's good. 59% rise in crime. That's fantastic. That's a significant, that's a significant number, isn't it? Yeah. You think so, wouldn't 59% is a, that should be an awakening number, shouldn't mm. it? Mm. Sort of third world, the government collapse number. Yeah. Because if it was going yeah. from one to five, no, it wasn't one crime in all of 2010. Yeah. There was crime. Now there's a lot more. Yeah. If my mortgage went up by 59%, I'd freak out. So that's, yeah. uh, that's their post. But what's interesting is if you click on that, they've got a whole bloody website. They've paid someone. Oh, yeah. Some sum to sit around making this life. Like, making that? Yeah. Somebody, they've paid for that. They've, oh, they've paid that. for this piece of crap. And what, what's the I've done that for free. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what Those is life politicians across the country have no plan. Well, what, what, what? This means you pay more tax while getting poorer services and lower quality of life. Ah, yes, unlike under the <coughs> Conservative government. Are you mad? <laughs> Straight, taking our community back to square one. It's like, God, I would love to go back to square one because we're on square like minus 500. There were lower crimes in square one. Yeah, like the, the taxes were lower at square one. <laughs> House again, prices were lower at square no, one. I, like, I'm actually looking forward to a Labour government. Oh, God. No, I am. I'm looking, and I'll tell you why I'm looking forward to it. Because it will have Labour on the rosette. It will have Labour on the door. We'll <laughs> It'll all be honest. know that it's Labour. <laughs> oh, no. Because it will be an honest Labour. And we will be able to see their incompetency for what it is. And hopefully the backlash will be that we end up with a Conservative Party, which is not a Blairite party painted blue. You know what? The, there's also going to be an advantage to this because everything they come out and do, they'll say, uh, we need immigration, we need diversity, we need... And you'll be like, ah, oh, they're all Tory policies. So you're a bunch of Tories, aren't you? <laughs> and there's nothing that they hate more than being called Tories. There isn't indeed. And that's a good sport to play if you're online. But they see here that they go on. And again, I want to make clear, I'm not endorsing the Labour Party on the slightest because even if they might be honest, they're still just ruining the place. They're like, it'd be pretty scary. It'd be pretty scary if they're in charge. Let's see what uh, life is like already on the Labour. Oh my God, <laughs> I live in a conservative country. Yeah, see what it's already like. And if you go Jesus. like... Jesus. Yeah, okay, Birmingham sucks. Camden sucks. Manchester sucks. But so does everywhere else. So does yeah. everywhere else. Absolutely. God. Also, you can read the reasons they say it sucks. It's like, oh, the, the tax is up. <laughs> yep. All right. Like Rishi Sunak came out and was like, yeah, you're going to have to pay £100 billion more in tax because of our immigration policy. And don't you know, they're also wasting money on equality and inclusion. Oh, it's like, that's you. You literally pay the NGOs to object to your Rwanda policy. You give them our money to protest your own goddamn policies. Never mind yeah. the NHS um, versus inclusion oh, guys. Just. You could have sacked day one. All the guys. And Again, what are they getting? Something a like quarter of a million a year? Yeah. That's that's the heads. Jesus Christ. But that's just the heads. I tell you, I can't wait until election night. We're going to stay up all night watching the results come in and cheering. We're going to pop champagne. 
as the Conservative Party gets absolutely crushed. Zero seats. There was, Zero. There was, uh, uh, we, we, we spotted, um, I think it was West Midlands Police, they were advertising for an, an, an assistant an assistant to the Director of Diversity, Inclusion, etc. £75,000. That's the assistant. <laughs> That's the Christ. assistant. Yeah. So they had well, you're a hate crime champion. You should get yeah, in there and be like, hey, exactly, I know all about this. Exactly, exactly. Because as I mentioned, it's not just the NHS, it's the police and everything else. They all have a head who's on 250 grand, an assistant on 75. Yeah. Then they've got the other links. They're on about 50. And then they've got the guys who are the interns, and they're about 40. And it's like, okay, that's made. That's I mean, made what, what, what's the most amazing thing, though, particularly about the, around the hate crime, is that if you've got all these sort of hate crime champions, you've got your hate crime com- commissar on 100,000, his assistant on 75,000, they have, as their target, they must not reduce hate crime. That's what, that's what the hate crime guidance says, that, that seeing a decrease in hate crime is not an acceptable target because it may, it may demotivate staff. It'll put them out of jobs. How? Yeah, exactly. But they say it. They say it out in the open. I don't, we need to see an increase in it. Can you imagine a murder squad whose job it was to make sure there were more murders? Well, this this is very much um, I can. Hopkins witch trials, isn't it? Yes. So, well, I get paid by the witch. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. That's exactly it. Yeah. But then you go on and you read the rest of this crap, and it's like, man, the economy would be worse off for the local <laughs> services. They would Just, be worse. How will it, how will it be worse off? How? Uh, <laughs> there might that? be inflation or something. I don't know. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. God. <laughs> God. You'd pay more taxes. The taxes would be high if the Labour... Well, okay, whatever. My point's been made, which is that that's mad. And they actually They're not spend accusing Labour of increasing immigration. Isn't that interesting? No. But you go on, and there's there's more of these. I mean, their their accounts are just being destroyed currently by community notes. Being have like, I have I ratioed this one as well? I don't know. You, you, <laughs> no, no. no, I haven't seen this one. Get back to work. Yeah, <laughs> but there's, so there's one there. But um, someone has also decided to jot down how much these people are spending currently. Because you may remember these people suck. Like it's not just that it's bad at PR. I mean, they're the awful people and everything else in terms of government. This is the money they're spending to try and keep themselves relevant just on Facebook. So this is cumulative. So you can see there, in the first couple of days, they're spending yeah. thousands of pounds. So since January, which is about here, spent about 600. 600,000 pounds on Facebook adverts. So between January 1st and now, they've spent a million pounds. 1.7. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. It starts yeah. at 600. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they spent over a million pounds just on Facebook ads. Is it working, Conservatives? Are you going up in the polls? Well, I don't know. But if someone's got a million quid and is willing to burn it, that's a pretty bad way to burn it. You could burn it with us instead, and you could sponsor this advert, which uh, I just wanted to show Harry, really. So I thought I'd, I'd show you, and let's enjoy. Let's play this. Oh, God damn it, the internet's not working. I don't know why I keep doing that stupid accent. I'd hang out with Thomas. I assume it's an Australian accent. Yeah, no, he came back from Australia. I've been taking, making memes ever since. So there we go. The Conservative and Unionist Party of the United Kingdom has bravely and consistently betrayed not only its own voter base, but all native peoples of the British Isles. From constitutional reforms to dissolving the British Empire, from desecration of tradition to importing endless migrants, it is the Conservative Party that has been on the forefront of the destruction of this ancient people and their lands. I am immensely proud of what we have managed to achieve as a party, taking the greatest empire to ever span the face of the earth to being a pathetic, miserable and broken nation mocked the world over. In recent years, we have greatly accelerated our plans to crush the ethnic Britons, making sure we openly show our hatred to you at every turn. And let me be clear, we do hate you. We despise you. We have not done enough, though. Despite all of our betrayal, our blatant loathing of you, you still vote for us. Even as we refuse to simply deliver a referendum, and then when we do, we subvert your wishes by then opening our borders to the world, Even as we take all of your wealth and make the promised public services completely unusable, there are still some of you who vote for us. It is you, our voters, who we find the most disgusting. (laughs) To combat this, I am incredibly proud to introduce our new policy, Zero Seats. Zero Seats (laughs) is the policy where we shall do everything possible to make sure at the next general election, we as a party obtain zero seats. You will have already seen zero seats in action, such as arguing over how much of your money to send to foreign conflicts that are nothing to do with you, or straight up making you homeless as we lavishly treat foreign peoples and hand over your property to them, and then criminally punishing you if you so much as point any of this out. So please, when you think about the next election, think zero seats. If we all play our part, we can finally make zero seats a reality. Brilliant. I just, if anyone's out there who's got some money, um... (laughs) And I mean, everyone was worried about AI. 
Yeah. It's like, no, no, it can do some great things like that. Oh, says you. You were the great warrior. <laughs> I was the great enjoyer of such things. Oh, okay. Well, there we go. It's worked but, out. But, but this, this, was the, this was the genius of, of Tony Blair. If you, if you look at any sort of change management uh, model, um, the final step in change management is that the change continues irrespective of whether you're there. Oh, yeah. That, that's it. Because what you've done, you've embedded it into the, into the wider culture of the organization uh, which, which you were leading. And that's precisely what's happened. You know, Blair's been gone for decades now, mm -hmm. uh, but he hasn't. He's still here. And like I said, I'm not joking. We have had a tour. We have had a Labour government since 1997. Preaching to the choir. I totally agree. Absolutely. And that, but this is the reason. I don't care. I really don't care. I don't care if if the Tories get absolutely wiped out. Oh, I'm because hoping. we're in a one party state already. Yeah, I'm hoping for yeah, like total destruction. But anyway, I did enjoy that meme. But I thought I'd uh, end this off with something else, which is um, if you think spending a million pounds in a couple of months, which is what the Conservative Party have done to get literally nowhere, is a waste of money well, to get. Like sub twenty percent in the polls. Yeah, uh, I have some more wastes of money, which are, are much more fun, if nothing else. So here we are. So this is a lady who's been doing some digging, and she's digging into different projects that we've been funding via the university system. You remember that university system that needs to be halved, according yeah, to Matthew yeah. Goodwin? Yeah. I think you might have a point because uh, I'll read some of them to you. The politics of the English grain trade, thirteen fourteen to eighteen fifteen. This project cost eight hundred and seventy nine thousand pounds. Why? Because <laughs> we asked for it. We got it. I mean, this is fascinating. Isn't, this isn't about studying the grain trade. This isn't about studying whether or not uh, certain things were right or wrong. It's instead studying things through a moral lens. Oh, oh, really? All uh, right. So we're not we're not going to learn anything practical from this. We're not going to yeah, sort of learn not. how. We're not going to use this and take it and try and apply it to. Um, to to solve the the farming crisis, which we discussed, no, no, no. Uh, which no, has no. been identified. No, no, no. Uh, this is right. Okay, so this so, is about the politics of the grain. Oh yes, I see that. It's in the title, isn't it? The <laughs> politics of the English grain trade. Who's 13, 14, 20, 15, Yeah. Or moral lens, though. So the the original moral lens, they argue, was uh, one in the medieval age, making sure that everyone had access to food. So that's why there were controls on food prices through that the guilds. That seems sensible. And then there was another moral lens in the modern age of checking about whether or not it made any economic sense to do X, Y, Z. Don't care. Well, that's practical, though. That's yeah. actually, you could make more money and wealth, and therefore we'd all have more food. Sure, okay, Adam Smith. So, you know, there's a proper argument there. And then they have the modern, the modern lens of looking Is at it. Is it racist? Uh, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was How did it? I know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they, they want to look at it through uh, a new lens, which they can't really define if you read it. It's actually just kind of, again, mustard gas to read. You mm. don't really feel fulfilled by the end of that. But that's 880 grand down the drain. Fantastic. No, I'm, 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 I'm going to um, see if I can do one about queering the agro economies from um, 13, 14 to 18, 15. Uh, seeing, it, seeing it through an intersectional... Um, queer lens. But don't ask. Useful. Don't ask for less than eight hundred thousand, because I mean you're underselling yourself. I'd, I'd like a, a black queer analysis of the Hundred Years' War, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, we've got a lens. We can apply it to something that probably didn't involve any black queers. Sorry, I'm allergic to bullshit. No, out. So let's move on. <laughs> so you can see here um, more. Bending, spilling, dumping, soil, rural resistance, and queer virility. <laughs> that, that sounds something like, like, like something you might type into Pornhub. I don't know. <laughs> soil, rural resistance, and a queer world. Uh, ah. Thank you, Oxford. Thank you for that. Very cool. They don't tell us how much that one was. Goes on. Race, decoloniality, and the will for adultery. Alterity. Alterity, sorry. Uh, who cares? <laughs> they could do a study on adultery if they wish. A critical ethical approach to the racial desubjugation. Uh, no, desubjection. Uh, mustard gas. Subjectivation. Mustard gas. I can't breathe. It's just, it just hurts yeah, yeah. to even look at. Yeah, I mean, just looking at the abstract looks fantastic. Thank you, University of Warwick. I, 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 was, thinking, I was thinking of doing a PhD uh, a, a while ago. Yeah. And I just couldn't bring myself to use that kind of bollocks language. But have you considered uh, how much money the UK, UK government will give you? I, I don't yeah, care. Didn't, I don't care. Think about I don't, it. I don't uh. come that cheap. I'm not. I'm not going. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm not going to do it. I'm. A, I'm of the. I, you've just. You've just got a degree in philosophy, haven't you? Yes. In order that, haven't you? So, uh, well, what do you think to the to, to the school of Scottish the Scottish school of common sense? Because I'm a big fan. I've got to say that a thing is pretty much what it appears to be. I agree with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
I don't know, man. Hard I mean, to disagree. That, that is just a load of crap, isn't it? Have Feeling you? fat? I am a little bit, yeah. Experiencing and treating fatness in the early modern France. <laughs> 1550 to 1715. Ah, yes, 1515. Everyone's worried about being too fat. Fat phobic. In fact, she says here, using feminist and post colonial methods, mm. ah, yes, those successful methods, I will investigate how negative narratives about fatness and slimming. Uh, shut up. So, sorry, we're talking you can about see a place this of is famine. Important. Yeah, we're talking about medieval France, the famine world. And she's like, what about gender, class, and race? There are no. What? This is meant to be a four year <laughs> study as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that University of Edinburgh. But if, if, if you think about this from, from from just through a socialist lens for a second, just for a second, if I have to, what benefit do they imagine that this study is going to reap for the for the wider populace? What in their what in their wildest imagination is this going to help us achieve? Tell me, tell me, Carl. Tell me. I have no idea. I don't even know what they. I, it, it's self. In, it's a self indulgence academic. Yeah. Odinism, isn't it? Yep. That's what it is. It is nothing more than that. And it goes on. It goes on and on. on. So what's this peopling of the Tularosa player during the last glacial maximum? 700 grand. Fascinating. Next one here, 500 grand. What's on rethinking class in the television industry? Thank you, University of Leeds. Yeah, we, we definitely need to that. We definitely need to rethink class in the television industry. 280 grand. Post postmodern fictions of the digital. Narrative techno. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. It's only 300k for that. <laughs> Just why bother? 280 grand, a different kind of war story, centering love and care in peace and comfort. Shut up. Shut, shut up. 279,000 quid. Yes. This one here, 800 grand, decolonizing the museum. Really? Really, really? <laughs> digital repatriation of the collection from the UK to India. Sorry, digital repatriation. Are we going to send them pictures? It's pricey pictures. We, okay, look, we can't say it back, but here's a picture of it. Yeah, you've got, you've got the Elgin Marbles, but here's, here's a picture. Yeah, here's a photo yeah, of the Elgin Marbles. Yeah. Now bugger off. It's me Shut with up. a selfie on yeah. it, so it's mine. Uh, yeah. 800 grand for this one, reality television. Okay, fantastic, don't care. 840 grand for this piece of trods. Okay, the thank typographic you. typographic punches of John Baskerville. 17... Heritage science and practice-based research. The, the point being, I mean, we're well aware there's a lot of waste in academia. <laughs> The level of waste is something new, if nothing else. But I'll end it off with probably the best one, because these are funded by universities, which you, you can argue, okay, well, they get their money from the state a lot or from scamming foreign students. So, I mean, that's a huge waste of, well, time and money, which is awful, because we could have done that, I don't know, building ships or just a train. But instead, we've done this. Fantastic. Um, that's bad. But what if, what if we took money straight from the taxpayer and used it to fund gay porn? And uh, that's what we've done. I'm sure everyone's glad to hear. 840 grand for this paper. The Europe that gay porn built. 1945 to the year 2000. Thank you. You, you know what? I feel like <laughs> Harry might be interested in this. <laughs> we, we, are, we, are in, we are taking so We are in Holy Week this week, in the lead up to yeah, Easter. I see. And I, I sort of wonder who, um, who, which tables Jesus would be turning over uh, should they appear in the temple this week. And I think this is the sort of bullshit that uh, Jesus would be taking his whip to, turning over, and um, just you know, holy in a holy manner, uh, shitting all over because it's it's nonsense and it benefits nobody. I don't know. I kind of want to know about the the kind of Europe gay porn would build. Apparently, it's one to live in. It's a task building, yeah. hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> At least according to this study. Jesus. And you see here the research organization, Birmingham University. I mean, that's a bit generous to call a research organization and not a clown show. But then they go on to write their abstract about how gay porn has, has built the modern world. And okay, whatever. I went and sourced the guy who's doing this. This is the professor. Professor Foreign name. Yeah. Has scammed 800 Honorary grand. Honorary professor foreigner. Yeah. Has scammed 800 grand. He's working at the University of Exeter. Yeah, of course, he's a queer gonna... cultural theorist. Yeah. What does that mean? It, nothing. <laughs> it, no, no. It, mean, it means he's gay and researches gayness <clears throat> of the, the body researching <laughs> visual cultures of sexual. I look at gay porn. Right. I watch That's... gay porn. And, and the government gives me 900 grand to do it. 800 grand worth of gay porn. It's a good investment. Thank you, dragons. Imagine trying to do this in the private sector. Can we put Alan Sugar in charge of government spending? <laughs> <laughs> Only of government spending on gay porn. But 
No, but he uh, he goes on to talk about it's not just him watching the gay porn. That would be weird and lewd and wrong. Yeah, yeah that's so, weird. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he says he will map the enshrinement of politics, transnational solidarity, community, and the erotic in gay pornographic magazines circulating post-war Europe. What what does this mean? My monograph: bareback porn, porous masculinities, queer futures, the ethics of becoming pig. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Say to that, why didn't that? Does, why what does that mean? Who's funding this? This man needs eight hundred grand. All right, he can't have enough gay sex until we give him the money to go and watch all the gay porn he would like. He says this research again. I told you they're research films. They will <laughs> they will take place between twenty twenty three and twenty twenty seven. So he's already had a year of watching porn. <laughs> he's got a he's got another solid three four years of watching porn behind him. I wonder if you can get this book on Audible. At the minute, I, at the minute, I'm sort of going through J.K. Rowling and, uh, and and Stephen King. But I think that sounds like a much better bet. I don't uh, know. Spend my time listening to bareback porn, porn <laughs> and queer futures. Yeah. Sorry, Anne. He, he, uh, while facing significant criticism from both national cultures that prefer that gay men sex as monogamous and from gay leaders who view pig sex as self-indulgent backsliding, gay, quote, pig <laughs> masculinities, as Florencio terms them, have enabled forms of queer world-making that harbor a potential for ethical and political transformation. Right, so no, no, but this is the important bit. This is, no, 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 Callie. Really? Really bit, are we? Right, I, right. I appreciate are you we? think. Yeah, yeah, no, no. You think this is just self indulgent wank fest? No, <laughs> it's about political and ethical trans. It's revolution. Ah, uh, yes. Revolution. Revolution. The issue is never pig, just gay the gay porn, pig masculinity porn. It's revolution. <laughs> what did you just say? I don't know. Well, it's I mean, not just about the gay porn, it's about sending a message. <laughs> yeah, it's about revolution. That's literally how he counts it. Yeah. Obviously, it's not about that. Yeah. Obviously, it's just him being smart enough to scam eight hundred grand to watch gay porn. <laughs> God damn! Yeah, I know. We're just literally playing this guy to watch gay porn. I looked up the source. The source of this money. He goes on to say, because of course he's not just watching it alone. That would be creepy. He says it's a collaboration <laughs> between the University of Exeter and the Lin Shopping University. That's in Sweden. So Captain Sweden is involved, and uh, the professor Jana Funka of the University <laughs> of Exeter. <Anchor. laughs> Me I mean, and my very on. good friend are going to watch gay porn and yeah, you're going to pay for it. Me and Jana Funka and Captain Sweden are going to watch gay porn. <laughs> well, they've also got Professor John Mercer from Birmingham University. That's oh, yeah. where they got the money. The Bishop's Gate Institute of London. And of course, the, the Germans are involved. The Schwerweiss Museum in Berlin has funded the, the, uh, the grant. But they have got some money through the Humanities Research Council, which is British. They got the money from the British and the Germans, the Swedes... Birmingham and Exeter and Mr. Funker are all going to get together and watch 800 grand's worth of gay porn over the next four years. Conservatives paying for this. My question is, which one is more hurting yourself in confusion? Spending a million quid on conservative Facebook ads or 800 grand on gay porn? Well, I mean, at this... Because oh. <laughs> <laughs> at least at the end of the gay porn, you've still got the gay porn. Yeah, the gay porn isn't the thing that's tanking them in the polls. So, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <coughs> This is this is uh, just just scroll back again. I just want, want to ask you a question. I want, oh, you want to read more? Oh, yeah, gay I, want, porn, I want to ask you the question: Is your okay? So, is your masculinity porous, Carl? What does that mean? Yeah, I don't even know. Not really. Am I open to being you don't gay? Think so? you, no, not really. You think it's your your masculinity is sealed? Is it pretty much? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think mine is. I'm not into pig porn either. So that's you're not, you're not into bareback pig porn. Don't know what that is, but it's I off, just, I just off like the table, women, man. I'm really not very complex. Well, that's why you don't get 800 grand. That is absolutely <laughs> true. That is precisely why the government isn't giving me 800 grand. <laughs> Hi, folks. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to support us, go to loadseas.com and sign up for £5 a month because, of course, we're demonetized on YouTube. But this gives us the freedom to do things like Lads Hour, which is where five of us sit around and talk about whatever subject we feel like. I've heard it described accurately as The View for Men, which I think is a ringing endorsement. And if you want further updates from us, you can go and follow our Twitter account, which is loadseaters underscore cotton.